don't know that. Air-cooled engines are kind of like the step-grandfather to our modern-day engines. They're kind of weird, and much like a step-grandfather, I've never worked on one. So naturally, we're going to try to rebuild the engine from top to bottom that's in this bus today in 12 hours. I'm Zach, and this is Money Pit. Huge thanks to our friends at Off The Record for sponsoring another episode of Money Pit. We've all been there before. You're cruising down the highway late at night, maybe doing a few miles an hour over the speed limit, when all of a sudden you hear it. Wee -woo, wee -woo. No, those can't be for me. Shh. They are for me. Now what? Well, let's face it. That ticket is gonna cost you. And with how much money the Miata's been costing me, there's just no way I can afford it. And it's not just a pricey fine. You're also looking at a potential increase in insurance premium. No one can afford an increase in insurance premiums, especially just over one stupid ticket. Well, don't put up with it anymore. Fight the ticket with the help of Off The Record. All you gotta do is download the app and put in some basic information like what happened, where you got the ticket, why you got it, and then Off The Record will connect you with a licensed attorney that'll fight the ticket on your behalf. And better yet, they offer a money back guarantee if they're not able to reduce your fine. Now I know some of you got speeding tickets over Labor Day weekend, so what are you waiting for? Go to offtherecord.com slash donut or use the Off The Record app and use code donut to save 10%. Now let's get back to the show. So as you might be able to tell, I'm not in LA. I'm actually in the beautiful city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. But why am I here? Well, our friends over at Chinatown Market are rebuilding this bus and we're here to help them rebuild the engine today. And I hear that they sent us some merch. Ooh, daddy. Oh, yo, that is too cool. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, are you ready? Dude. All right, why are we talking fashion? And what does it have to do with cars? Well, a big part of Chinatown Market's collaboration with the Grateful Dead is this bus. They're building this 1969 VW bus as an homage to an old Deadhead's van that would have driven around the country back in the 60s and 70s. So helping us achieve or attempt to achieve our lofty goals today, we've got Kirky Local, Dan Brockett. You are a Stunt driver. You're an FD drift car haver. Tell me about what you've mechanic so far. Drove to Arizona to pick this thing up, drove it overnight, got home, took it to my buddy's next level paint here in Albuquerque, and they knocked out all the dents, all the dings, did all the body work, primed, sanded, sealed. In done. one day. In one day. So during my off week, while the paint was out gassing, I did the entire interior. I did it all in my driveway, and for most of the upholstery, which I had to Google how to do, I used this really sick top of the line sewing machine. So without further ado, we're gonna get this bus on the lift and yank the engine out of it. And along the way, as we do that, we'll talk about the air-cooled engine, what's different about it as I learn, because I've never been that deep on one, so it's gonna be an interesting day. Let's get to it. Right now, I'm trying to take out the bell housing bolts to disconnect the engine from the transaxle. Once those are out, I think there are two engine mounts attached to the subframe. We should be able to drop those down, and then I think that's it. Uh, yeah. So you got to be organized, especially when you don't know what you're doing. So as things come off, label them, put them in a bag, and that should save us some headaches uh, in a few hours this afternoon, you know? This is all the electronics this thing has. That's it, baby. That's it. Yeah! So the idea here is to take all the uh, peripherals, all the accessories off the engine, get ourselves down to a naked engine, and then we'll use that naked engine as a reference for when we're putting together our new stuff. Like I said before, air-cooled engines are old technology. The big difference between these and new engines is that air-cooled engines don't use coolant. They just use air to keep cool. It's literally in the name. These things were originally put into production in the 1930s, so not only are they kind of weird, they're also old. So there's bound to be a lot of stuff I've never seen before. So this is uh, part of the exhaust pipe and the heater tube. Whoa! So you can see the exhaust pipe runs right through here, which runs through the center of this big old tube that just gets all hot in here and then sends air to the cabin. So this is how this thing gets heat. And it, kinda, and it looks like a duck, dude. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's got a duck face with a rat. He's an excited duck. <laughs> you can also, I don't think we've mentioned it, but you can see it's a horizontally opposed engine, sort of like a uh, Porsche 911. Basically the same thing. Or a Subaru. Or a Subaru, with less Ringland issues. <laughs> shots fired, not even shots fired. 
They know. So these, these cases tend to crack over time too. And I think that's part of, uh, you know, I think that's partially because they're made out of magnesium, which dissipates heat well and is very light. But eventually they'll crack and uh, leak tremendous amounts of oil. Drop your sandwich you want. Is there a nut on the back of this that you haven't told me about? That I'm just spinning? Mm. Yeah, you're just spinning. <laughs> well, okay. Let's lift it as a... Right. Yeah! One fell swoop, baby, one fell swoop. Okay, so all these old air-cooled engines need rebuilt pretty frequently, but they can only be rebuilt so many times before they're just too worn out. And we didn't know what kind of condition the engine that was in our bus was in. So we went with a kit from J-Bugs that will essentially replace everything on the old engine. However, we are 100% trusting that this kit has everything we need to complete this rebuild. So speaking of rebuilds, let's talk about engine oil. So on the topic of oil, one of the best ways, one of the most surefire ways to know if you need to rebuild your engine is based on how much oil it consumes while you're driving it. And everything will kind of have a spec for how much it's appropriate to consume. Like these consume a lot of oil by today's standards. Uh, they're within spec if they're consuming about a quart every thousand miles, which is kind of a lot, but you know the spec. Then if you're consuming two quarts every thousand miles, you know you're consuming too much, which means something inside the engine has a problem and it's letting oil go into the combustion chamber or just leak out onto the ground. Your piston rings can be too worn, which allows oil to get past them, go into the combustion chamber and out the tailpipe, or your valve guides could be worn, letting oil down into the combustion chamber. Or you could just have some leaks externally, which this had many. So how much oil your engine is consuming is really the, the most surefire way to know whether or not you need to rebuild. So with the engine out of the bus, we started putting bits together from the kit, starting with our bottom end, our crankshaft, our connecting rods, our pistons. But as you could expect, we skipped a few things. So it's 7.30 p.m., which puts us at about nine, maybe almost 10 hours into all this. And the parts table still looks like a parts table. It is a pile of parts. We've got a few things stuck together, but uh, we're not moving too quick. Uh, the guy we were kind of relying on to help us through the hard spots, he ain't here. So we're going to keep trucking, see what we can get done. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Except for the time consuming part. Okay, so uh, the main bearing for the crank. Uh, and this one. Yep. Two of them should have been put on before we put our timing gear and our flywheel on, which we just realized. So with uh, the very small amount of work we've gotten done, we're gonna have to go back, undo it, and then redo it. All right, so we've got the distributor yeah, on. We've got a distributor drive shaft, so this thing's ready to make spark. So a little ways away, but that's okay. Uh, so now we need to start putting some of this stuff together for real, get uh, half the new engine on the engine stand, and then start putting stuff in it. How many hours are we in right now? About 10, maybe 11. Too many. We don't have that many left. Just found out this van has to be at the wrap shop for a wrap by 8 a.m. So we better get boogieing. Soon after, we realized we needed an expert, so we put out a call on Instagram. David showed up and immediately realized that we had a mix of dual port parts from the kit and single port parts from the original engine. So this kit is supposed to increase horsepower a lot, and one of the ways that it does that is by uh, changing it to a dual port intake manifold so it can get in more air. You see the two ports there? Dual ports. Get it? Well, the problem is the stock engine is a single port. You see that? Singular port. The problem there is that the intake manifold that we need to use is a single port intake manifold because the kit didn't come with a new intake manifold. So David went back to his shop and found some bits that we needed to continue assembly and before we knew it, we went deep into the night. All right, it's 3.30 in the morning. We've got this engine pretty much together. Still working on the valve train. Got to get the push rods figured out. Listen, the list actually continues. There's a lot left to do, but we got a lot of the big stuff done and we're gonna call it for tonight. Okay, we are back in the shop. Got a few hours of sleep last night and we're getting it going. Uh, working on a push rods and trying to put them together currently, which is going less than smoothly, which makes sense given how this has gone thus far. But I think we're gonna get this thing together and running today. Thoughts? Yes. Um, I got nothing. 
Dan and I then got right back to it and started assembling as much as we could of the main engine block. And then, a few hours later... All right, the basic engine is together. The bottom end is in, the top end is in, and it spins, valves open. Seems to be pretty much there. So the last step of basic engine assembly is to put the rocker covers on, which are kind of funny. They use a cork gasket like they did things back in the day. They also don't use any hardware or any, you know, fasteners. So with these rocker covers, our short block is assembled. Short block means that it's basically the engine without any accessories. So next, ow we got to put on all the accessories from our old engine, like the generator and the fan system and all those pieces of sheet metal that direct all that air. Jesus. That's how you put the valve cover on. And then shove the thing back in the, uh, in the old bus, in the old bus rooney So, I mean, no time to sit and uh, be proud of ourselves. we got to keep moving. Well, as we continued to put the engine together, I continued to run into questions. And things weren't feeling quite right until another Kirky miracle happened and we found another air-cooled Volkswagen expert. All right, so this is getting ridiculous. We've got our third Volkswagen expert here, Rocky from General Parts. Thank you so much for coming. I don't know how we keep finding air-cooled Volkswagen experts, but we do. And honestly, I think you're gonna save our lives. Look at this, we're already back down to just the case and crank and rotating assembly which is frightening, but when we got everything put together, it was too tight when we tried to spin it. So we got to figure out what's going on, which is a bit of extra work, but not too bad. We're pretty good at taking this thing apart and putting it back together now. Uh, maybe eventually we'll put it back together such that it runs, but we'll see. So we're concerned that the rods are in backwards. There's, this is very ambiguous. There's a lot of conflicting information out there. Uh, we used our best judgment and did what we did, but I think the rods might be reverse of what they should be. So we're getting back down to the rods. Uh, we'll see what happens. With Rocky and all of his experience here to save the day, we got back to assembling everything the right way. Oh yeah, and did I mention these engines don't even use a head gasket? Uh, this is actually the closest thing we've got to a head gasket on this, where, where the top of the jug meets the head, it seals up nice and flat, metal on metal. I think I said that the Yamabon does that, but really that's just to seal the case up to keep it from leaking oil out the bottom. If we were leaking compression out there, that would mean our rings would be uh, gone. So yeah, this the kit came with paper gaskets for the bottom. We ditched those in favor of this sweet Yamabon stuff. And uh, at the top, we just seal up metal on metal. Air-cooled stuff, baby. Insane. Quite, That's but hey. Insane. Like we were talking about at the beginning, before we took everything apart, the whole big shroud that, you know, the air runs through and runs down the sides of the engines to cool it, all that air would just go through the jugs right between them and out the bottom if it weren't for these deflectors on the bottom. You see these, Phil? These big ones, that keeps all that air from going between the jugs, and then those keep it from going between the gaps in the head. So these are super important. And I forgot to put these in the first time around too, until I found in a hidden section in the book that uh, these are very important and they need to be installed and to backtrack as far as you have to to put them back in. So backtrack we did. And in they are. Unlike my nose and my mask, I have such a big face. Rocky's experience really came in clutch as we continued to assemble the short block and it was finally time to test if we were doing things right. Oh, that feels great. That feels really good. So we turned around the connecting rods since uh, I put them in backwards and now things feel exquisite. So I think we're on the right track. There's hope for this thing yet. You know, it's something every step of the way. The new O-ring for the distributor was huge and we were trying to get it into this bore and it just sheared itself. So we're just gonna use the old one. It's still in good shape and hopefully it won't leak. If it does, it'll only be a little leak. It's something every step. All right, this thing's starting to look like an engine again. We've got some accessories on like an oil cooler, our distributor, our fuel pump. Now we need to put our oil pump in place down here. The heart of the engine that pumps the lifeblood. Uh, obviously super important. Uh, did you see all these shiny parts we got? Dang, look at my handprints, come on, man. That's right, baby. This thing looks like a real race car engine. Well, we got some new tins for our dual port head, you see? So these tins uh, have room for these two ports. It's bigger than the stock stuff that we had, so we needed new tins. And luckily, we were able to get these locally today, which is kind of crazy. But we got them, they look sweet, and they're on, and it'll work. Okay, we've got all our tins on, most of our peripherals. I think we're ready 
for what's gonna make this thing look like a real engine again. Let's do it, dude. Let's do it. Get her on there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, the upper part of the fan system for the cooling, uh, as you may recall from what feels like a month ago. And it's finally going back on. Maybe, kind of, sort of fighting us. All right, so I oriented, orientated this so that it was pointed down, right? And now the battery post is up against the generator. Hey, Stand. hey. What does that tell you? That shit was assembled wrong in the first place. So this whole time, it hasn't been Hasn't been venting like it should have been. It's always something, Rocky. Yeah. It's always something. <laughs> well, it looks like an engine. We got all our shrouds on, and honestly, we've made so much progress, and we owe it all to Rocky, honestly. So, we're gonna call it for tonight. It's almost four again, and we're gonna be back here in the morning again. And tomorrow's the day. I swear, tomorrow's the day. This thing's gonna run and run inside of the bus. It's gonna move the bus tomorrow. That's what I'm. Yeah. Obviously things have been taking a little bit longer than we originally were hoping for, but our original goals were absolutely ridiculous. The fact is we're making progress and this thing is gonna run, but we've been having to roll with the punches along the way since this has taken uh, like four times as long as we were originally hoping. So the guys from One Click Stick, the guys that were gonna wrap the van for Dan, instead of doing that at their nice shop that they have all set up for wrapping, they came here and did it here yesterday. Take a look, it's sick. Just kidding, psych, you can't see it yet. If you wanna see it, and trust me, you do, you gotta check out Chinatown Market's YouTube video. Check it out in the link wherever Eddie or Felipe puts it. So anyhow, the plan for today is to get this thing buttoned up and into the vehicle pretty soon. So I'm getting some uh, odds and ends bolted up. We gotta get the intake and the exhaust on, those are the big things. But uh, I'm gonna wait for Rocky to get here on that because maybe he'll look at it and go, no you dummy, it just goes like this. That'd be cool. Hopefully he'll be here soon. That boy can write. Did you enhance the duck? He's got eyebrows now and he's angry about it. Probably because his mouth is full of hornets. We've, We've done it again. Methist up again. And uh, put the horse before the carriage. And then we, now we can't get the manifold shoehorned in. It just uh, should have done it earlier, is what we're trying to say here. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Well, you know, how are we supposed to know until we found out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are there. Nothing on top of the valve covers. These have to go underneath and from the back. Let's see. So while I tried to figure out where things went, and as Dan also struggled with the carb, guess who showed up? Rocky's back! Rocky's back! This engine's going in! All right, everything's fine now. He gave it a once over, it looks like we didn't do anything too boneheaded, and that the issues that we were facing were actual issues, so that's good. Uh, this thing's almost complete, putting the clutch and pressure plate on right now, and then slam this thing into the butt of that bus. We sorted the final bits with Rocky's help and finally got to throw the new engine in the van. Mind you, it did need some persuasion. Whoa! How much, how close is it? The bell housing bolts are tight. Oh my God, this thing looks complete. It looks about the same as it did three days ago but slightly shinier and uh, with more of my fingerprints all over it. Pretty sweet, uh, we're so close. So we're gonna put some oil in it and break it in, which means we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna run it at about 1500 to 2000 RPMs for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna shut it off, let it cool down. We're gonna change the oil, dump out all the oil that's in there from break-in because there'll be little pieces of metal in it from that break-in from all our new engine components. Then we'll drain that out, let it cool down. We're gonna have to readjust our valve lash and then we'll put fresh oil in it, put this thing on the dyno and see what it makes. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, Dan's about to crank that key and this thing might just fire to life. So you're gonna be blocking air because we're trying to get a bunch of fuel into the carb, right? Exactly. So then are you gonna pull your hand off while he's still cranking? Yeah, as soon All as right. he wants to start, I'll remove it. All righty. Daniel, you ready? Yeah. Let's crank this. Two, one. <laughs> I got the throttle, dude. Okay. 
Nope, everything's covered in oil. That's not what you want. Can you see anything? Can you tell me what happened? <laughs> no, I don't know what happened. So with a big puddle of oil on the ground, Rocky pretty quickly thought that he knew what was going on. Well, uh, looks like this one's completely on me. So there are these two springs, uh, oil relief valves, and uh, the long one goes in the front of the engine, which I put at the front of the engine, except the front of the engine is at the back of the bus. So this is the front of the engine. I put the long one at the front, physically speaking. But literally speaking, this is the front of the engine. So that's what caused that, and I'm pretty sure it just blew the oil cooler apart. So now we need a new oil cooler. Rocky says he might have one. Here's the hoping. Well, Rocky did have a new oil cooler, so we got it in, and we've got everything buttoned back up, and we're ready to put oil in it again, and fire it up, and then break it in. Hopefully this time, it'll be a little less dramatic. Are you gonna throttle? Yeah. So what have we learned about air-cooled engines so far? Well, like a lot of old stuff, they're pretty simple, but they are unique. And there's just no replacement for having experience when you're working on this kind of stuff, especially when you're trying to rebuild an engine from scratch. Now, as far as pros and cons go, well, man, I can't see too many pros other than not having to use coolant. I guess that's pretty cool. But these things, well, they make a lot of noise. They need rebuilt often and they don't make very much power. So I can see why people replace these in a lot of the old VW buses. But overall, it was an awesome experience leeching on other people's experience to figure out how to get this thing put together. See you, Rocky. See you <laughs> there goes my hero. Well, Rocky just rolled off and our bus runs and I honestly can't really believe it. I can't believe how much came together over the past three days. Look, yeah, we were talking about getting this done in 12 hours. That was never realistic. I just can't believe at this point that it got done. So many people came together and gave up their life to help us get this thing done that I honestly am in amazement right now. I'm in awe of the people around here. And then 1010's giving us this shop space. They gave us two bays, prime time space. Run of the mill, let us use all their tools, let us do whatever we needed to do, and we're so helpful. I couldn't be more thankful. I literally can't believe it. And then Rocky, oh my God, I don't even know how we got hooked up with Rocky, but he's got, he owns an air-cooled VW shop. It's called General Parts, and it sounds so cool. This is what he does. And he is the reason this thing runs. And I realize I see this van and see how damn cool it looks. It honestly looks awesome. Like I can't believe it. And you guys can't see it. So if you want to see it, which you should, you got to check out Chinatown Market's video.